Will Zillow replace the real estate agent? I know that's on the minds of a lot of real estate agents, but the short answer is no, not yet. And if that's what you came here for, then thanks for watching and please hit that subscribe button on your way out. But if you stick around, I'll explain to you why Zillow has not yet made the real estate agent obsolete, how they could if they wanted to, and when they might do it. Hi, my name is Joel Y. I am a real estate agent. Yeah, I'm one of those agents that Zillow allows to exist. But anyway, subscribe to this channel. Um, I'm not a channel, an entertainment channel where you come here to watch me make a fool or give you statistics on the stock market or make predictions. People come here usually just once or twice or maybe a few times when they're selling their house to learn how to sell it themselves so they can save a ton of money. And by subscribing to this channel, by hitting that subscribe button down there, you're helping other people find it. So you're, you're helping your fellow human beings and it's not costing you anything. So please hit that subscribe button and that like button. Um, but what we're gonna talk about today is Zillow. If, you, if you've bought any real estate, bought or sold a house, thought about buying any real estate, thought about selling your house, had anything at all to do with real estate, so wholesale or whatever, you've probably heard of Zillow. Zillow is the behemoth of real estate portals online. Zillow is huge. The, the idea of Zillow came about in 2004. It actually went online in 2006, February of 2006 to be precise. It went public 2011. Public means it started selling stock. And, and then it just grew and grew and grew and grew until today. Um, and let's go over some statistics of Zillow. We can see just how big it really is. So I'm gonna start with 2013. I became a real estate agent in 2009 because I got laid off my project manager job building houses because of the great 2008, 2009 recession. Um, and then I got into real estate because I had a license from that part of my life and I started selling real estate and it was easy money. I was working with investors and, and veterans, active duty military because they had jobs still. Um, but I'm gonna start with uh, 2013. So I've been in real estate for a while. And then in 2013, I noticed when agents started popping their head up and, and getting a little nervous about, about Zillow. Um, agents started to complain about it. You started to hear more about it. Uh, they were fighting back against it. We're gonna, I wanna start stats from that year. So in 2013, Zillow had 54.3 million unique users. That's 54.3 million. Could you, imagine if you had a, could you imagine if you had a website and 54.3 million people came and looked at it? That's a lot of eyes. And that year they made $197.5 million in gross revenue. Now that's not a huge amount of money for a, a public company, but it, it's still a nice chunk of change. So move on to 2020. Now during the intervening, er, intervening years, it, Zillow, these numbers are constantly increasing. There were no backslides. They're constantly going up. So in 2020, we're up to 245 million unique visitors and $3.339 billion in gross revenue. That's how big Zillow is. They're huge. Of, of all the homes that, that were sold in the US um, in, in that year, according to NAR, there were 5.4 million. According to a company called Statista that, that does uh, just all kinds of statistics, there were 7.1 million. They probably count like for sale by owners and trailers and apartments and everything else. So. We'll just, let's just use a number kind of in the middle in there. We'll say six and a half million homes were sold in 2020. Of those six and a half million homes, 80% were viewed on Zillow. 80% of those homes were viewed on Zillow. That's a huge chunk of the market. So Zillow has two, two plus million real estate agents that are listed on their, on their site on Zillow. Um, Zillow has sold 16.9 million leads to real estate agents. Okay, let's talk about that for a minute. That's how, how Zillow makes most of their money, by selling leads to real estate agents. You know when you're looking on Zillow and you see a house and you want to know more about it and there's that little contact agent button over here, when you click on that button, it connects you to an agent and then Zillow sells your information to that agent. That's how Zillow makes the majority of their money. So real estate agents are their bread and butter. That's why real estate agent, that's why Zillow has not yet made real estate agents obsolete. But Zillow has some other businesses too. It's not just selling leads to real estate agents, although that is the majority of their money. They also have a mortgage business. They'll, they'll, they'll sell you a mortgage. 
they have a showing service. They just bought that. No one's quite sure what they're going to do with that yet. Um, a showing service is what us real estate agents use to schedule viewings of homes for buyers. Um, the, like, the, way, the way the real estate industry works is that brokerages cooperate. They put their listings on the MLS, the multiple listing service, and then any real estate agent in that MLS can, can look at, at those houses and then schedule them for viewings for buyers. And we do that through a showing service. Zillow just bought one of those. Fascinating. <laughs> Zillow also has an iBuyer company. They'll buy your house directly from you without going through any real estate agents or anything. And the scary thing that should be on real estate agents' minds is that Zillow now owns brokerages across the United States. In most major cities, Zillow has their own brokerage and that gives them direct access to the MLS, to all that information and data. And we all know that in this day and age, data and information is money. And, and that's what real estate agents were trying to fight Zillow with, you know, in past years by not giving them the data. Well, now Zillow just stepped in, started a brokerage and they own the data. They own it right alongside us. So as I say, Zillow makes most of their money selling leads to real estate agents. But if real estate agents stop buying those leads, or if for some reason that, that revenue dried up, just think, Zillow could, instead of having that contact agent button up there, Zillow could just put Ask Zillow. And then you click on that button and then you go directly to somebody that works for Zillow and they go show you the house. Um, they'd have to work through the, the logistics of that, but I'm sure it wouldn't be difficult for a company like that. So you, you, you see how threatening they really are. As long as they're making money from real estate agents by selling them leads, real estate agents will be allowed to exist. But when they stop, real estate agents may be looking for another job. Okay, so now a couple other, I, I said I was gonna talk about a couple other smaller startups that are trying to disrupt the industry, and there are. Um, there's the iBuyers, we talked about that in this video about uh, our, our real estate agents obsolete. Um, there's also some company, some other smaller startups. There's one called Nada, uh, Nada, which means nothing in Spanish. You know, kind of catchy, I guess. They claim that they'll sell your house for free. They won't. Um, nobody can run a business and not make money. But what they do is they stack services. They stack like real estate, uh, mortgage, title, and insurance. And then they just move those numbers all around and make it look like they're selling your house for free. But it still costs you money. Um, there's another one called Simple Showing that I actually almost invested in being a, a for so by owner advocate. Uh, Simple Showing started out as a company that was going to revolutionize the way that, that you could show your home if you were selling it, especially by yourself. Um, because that's, that's the biggest problem about for sale by owners is finding the time to actually show your house to potential buyers. In a market like this where homes are selling in a matter of hours, it's not a problem. You just show it a couple times, it sells. But in a buyer's market, sometimes your home's on the, on the market for a longer time, sometimes a month, two months three months and you've got to be showing it that whole time. Well, Simple Showing was going to was going to have a way that you could handle that, um, you know, without being there. But now they've just kind of turned into a into a discount brokerage. They changed their whole business model and there's discount brokerages all over the place. There's Redfin, which is national. Every every, every big city has them. We have one here called uh, Homes for Less. You know, they'll sell your house for for a cheap amount of money, which is cool. As we talked about in another video up here, um, Hiring a real estate agent, experience doesn't really matter anymore. Real estate agents are mostly just there to, to show you houses and to fill out paperwork. That's basically what our job is now. Because of sites like Zillow, where consumers can go to get all that information for free. Okay? So I also told you that I would tell you what is going to ultimately disrupt the industry and drastically change the way that homes are bought and sold around the world. And that is through the blockchain. I mentioned blockchain in my last video. But the blockchain, if you're, not, if you're not familiar with what blockchain is, you've probably heard of Bitcoin. Blockchain is the infrastructure that lets Bitcoin exist. Um, it's a, it, blockchain is a way that people can, can transact or, or share information and it, it can't be altered, you can't cheat it, it can't be changed, it's there forever and you don't need a middleman. So, so for instance, if I want to send money to you for whatever reason, I don't need to go through a bank. You know, you have companies like Vimo and PayPal, but they're still basically banks. You're going through them. Um, they're, they're the central part, the centralization. I gotta go through them to send it to you. On the blockchain, I'll be able to send money directly to you at a fraction of the cost that these other companies uh, 
10 shards. Um, they're they're going to disrupt the, they could disrupt companies like Uber, the insurance business, eventually the real estate business. And I'm going to do a lot more research on how it might affect the real estate industry. And I'll do another video on that. Um, but that's going to take a lot of, a lot of getting into because it, while it's been discussed and, and tossed around, nobody's really started working on it hard yet. But anyway, yeah, the blockchain is going to put me out of a job. That's why I invested in it now. So hopefully I'll make enough money to support myself. The blockchain is like, you younger people won't remember this. Remember, you weren't around, nothing to remember. You won't know about this, but back in the 80s and the early 90s, even when the internet was up and coming, it was like the wild west out there. That's kind of what kind of what it feels like right now with blockchain. It feels like the beginning of the internet. And we all know what the internet did to the world. It changed everything. And that's coming. Mark my words. This isn't a channel that this isn't a channel that people come back to again and again to watch me be entertaining. I'm not. Or to learn about stock quotes or statistics for something or other or to learn about, you know, Bitcoin or or whatever. This is a, a channel that people come to maybe a couple times, learn how to sell their house themselves to save tons of money. So when you subscribe to this channel, it puts me up in the rankings, helps other people find it, so they too can save lots of money. So hit that subscribe button. And um, thanks for watching.